All right. Well, a very good afternoon and good morning to some of you. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. Good day. We should probably say to all of our country music cruise fans, friends and family out there. I am now your virtual cruise host, Jason Venner. If you've attended the country music cruise before, you know me quite well. Obviously, we've done a few of these together. If uh, you're about to be on your first one, then uh, it's a pleasure to e-meet you in this fashion. I can't wait to get to, to be able to get together with you soon. Uh, I am sitting today with two gentlemen who, uh, if you're familiar with Country Music Cruise, you know these two gentlemen very well. First and foremost, he is the Senior Vice President and Executive uh, of Star Vista Live and an Executive Producer here on board the Country Music Cruise, Mr. Mike Jason. Mike, thanks for being with us. Hey there. And uh, we also have Mike Robertson, who's the Executive Producer of the Cruise and one of our, uh, he really is our talent wrangler, the man who has all the connections you could want and possibly have in the world. Uh, Mike Robertson. You have a pretty uh, long and storied uh, background in the music industry, pretty absolutely amazing, uh, and you're a huge part of the Country Music Cruise, and we appreciate having you here with us here today. Great to be here with everyone. Um, before we get going, obviously, uh, Mike, Jason, and I, and uh, some other folks at Star Vista Live had a conversation about all of these cruises and the disruption that the society is going through as a whole and what we're all facing, it's very unprecedented, obviously. And uh, Mike and Alan Rubens, many of you know who Alan is, the other senior vice president at Star Vista Live, decided that it was a great opportunity to jump on camera and to, uh, to chat and to answer many of the questions that our guests might have, and at least to explain some of the decision-making and some of the thought process that goes into uh, to where we stand today. Uh, I will say this, first and foremost, the Country Music Cruise, what an incredibly positive and wonderful group of uh, family members uh, you are as cruisers. You're just, you're always, there's just a different side of life for all the Country Music Cruisers, and, and I absolutely adore you for it. Uh, overwhelmingly uh, positive response and questions. Of course, there's always some specific questions. So before we jump into anything, I do want to mention that if you submitted a very specific individual question, whether it was financial or your cabin, et cetera, we will get to you. We will absolutely do our best to uh, have somebody reach out to you directly. It may not be in the forum of, of this right here, because this is we're trying to keep this for all guests and answer uh, some grander questions. So Mike, if you don't mind, uh, Mike, Jason, I would love to start with you. Um, people often, uh, not fair to say, a lot of people don't fully understand what it takes to build a charter cruise, what it takes, how long it takes, what's the process of putting together the country music cruise, and that often will lead us, uh, or that will lead us into some of these other questions. So would you mind discussing a little bit about the process? Yeah, I'd give you a quick overview. Um... You know, we assume that everyone understands how far out you, you you work, and that's not true at all, because before I was in this business, I didn't understand it. So we're about 20 months ahead of the cruise, we start. And 20, 22 months, we start talking to the charter companies. I want to get specific weeks. I want to get specific uh, itineraries so that the midpoint is a place we can bring artists sometimes on and off. Um, I want to get obviously, you know, all the amenities that we can from the charter companies. I want to take that week away from our competitors who might be trying to steal it. So about 20 months out, we start and probably about 15, 16 months out, we absolutely have the contract. We know our itinerary. It's all buttoned up and, and we, we have the ship. We actually lease the ship. So we own it for the week. So at about 16 15, 16, 17 months out, uh, you know, we physically own that ship for that week. If it's empty, we pay the full amount. If it's full, obviously, we pay the same amount, um, and and it's irrevocable. Uh, the charter companies can sell that week themselves, so I kind of take it out of their inventory. Uh, and then Mike and I get together. We've talked certainly before that, but then we, we go into the artist uh, section, and, you know, we say, well, who have we not had before? who might be interested sometimes some of them will get into this in a bit but sometimes the artists are, are a little reticent the first year or two and then the third or yeah. fourth year they join us have a great time or they hear from someone else uh when we got uh, some artists early on they were able to kind of pass the message on that it's a good experience and so you know probably 15 16 months out mike we're approaching the artists i think any sooner than that they're not really planning that far out so i don't know if you want to expand on that bit yeah, I, th I think most artists, you know, 13, 14 months out is when they tend to book dates, maybe 15 months out. In our case, because we want to have the lineup before we sell, 
we're uh, we're kind of already pressing them at at you know 15 16 months and sometimes we don't get some of the answers until you know a week before everything goes to print and the website's being designed but but certainly it's a uh, it's a process that starts early on we start having general conversations about you know some artists just won't sell they're just not going to sell or some artists block that window of time every year uh and are just not going to do any dates in january february uh, they let their bands go uh they let their crew go everybody's kind of off during that period of time so we're, we're working through that very early on and kind of know who will and won't and then it's just a matter of making offers and seeing what we can get confirmed we've gone so far as to fly out the uh, the sound uh guy from an artist to visit the ship and see the room and you know to make sure obviously you don't do that for everybody but we did that in the early days we, we said okay go see the ship go see the room and uh lots of preparation up front so you know we start way out in front and that enables us 14 15 months out to have a pretty good idea of the the uh the lineup and could you touched on it briefly but could you elaborate a little bit on the relationship with the cruise line itself between you star vista live and let's say holland america line yeah, absolutely. It's a uh, it's a contractual uh, agreement that I have for that specific week. So um, once we sign the the agreement with them, uh, like I say, we own that week. We cannot switch a week. We cannot switch a time period. We cannot uh, switch itineraries without their permission. So basically, once it's kind of etched in stone, um, you know, they hold all the cards and and they can allow us to do things, but um but uh it, it requires their permission and so uh it's a lease same way you lease a car or you lease a, um, a building for a wedding or whatever it's 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 kind of ours and uh, they've been great i mean i love holland america they've been a great partner and they always kind of help us work out whatever the issue is in terms of changes of itinerary sometimes an artist will come to us and say i'll go to place a but i can't go to place b well then mike and i get together and we say okay now we didn't switch the ports and then I have to get permission from uh, but it is very much a legal uh, they're a very big company and it's, it's a legal document we have between them and us and anything requires their permission any changes and I mean so that leads us directly into what most people are, are uh, tuning into this this uh, webinar to ask about and understand is moving an actual charter date so country music cruise we had to move the dates uh, and postpone the cruise tell us a little bit about the process yeah, the process was sort of, first of all, we, you know, we were shocked by all the uh, situation that happened earlier in the spring. We were, uh, everyone was kind of up in the air. Uh, at some point in April, it became pretty obvious that, um, to me at least, that I wasn't sure that we could go out in January and provide the kind of experience we really wanted to give to our guests. And so that kind of concern grew. Um, and as I looked at it, um, I said, you know, we need to really look at alternatives. Well, it took probably six or eight weeks um, to work with Holland America to, to you know, re reschedule the cruise, if you will. And, and every week that went by, I was more and more sure that that needed to be done. But again, I was not allowed to announce anything until I had the piece of paper in my hand. Mm -hmm. And they were deliberate. They have lawyers and they have all kinds of, and again, they're cooperative, but they're not just they're not quick sometimes and so we talked to them um, and, and we uh, looked at rescheduling the cruise to a time period where we felt the environment would be way way uh, more improved and we'd be able to uh, provide the experience that we wanted to the guests and um, so as soon as we got that we announced it um, unfortunately it took us a little bit longer than we would have in our minds we knew where we were going but we didn't have the contract renegotiated uh, but again, we did that, and they were they were cooperative, and you know we explained the situation to them. So they were they were cooperative, but um, deliberate. And and fair enough. Uh, a common question we have in, from our guests right now is, why November? So why not push out, let's say, to January if we're going to postpone? Why not postpone a full to when it was going to be, at, you know, the following year? Why November? Yeah, it's a great question, and you know, looking back, anything anything could have, could have been done. I think the most important thing for us was to uh, provide the lineup. And so uh, Holland America offered me the ship during that week. And then Mike had conversations with booking agents and managers and artists. And it became obvious to us that that time period, we could secure the full lineup that we had originally to come back. We worked really hard to get that lineup in the first place. 
lots of moving pieces and we didn't want to give up that lineup and, and have it completely open, not really know. Mm -hmm. So they were able to respond to it November 21, where they would have had much more difficulty responding to it January 22. And it would have taken longer. We would have been announcing without really knowing the lineup. And we wanted as much certainty as we, as we could get. So it was the availability of ship, and then it was really the lineup. And oh, Mike, you had great conversations with the artists, but I, they were not thinking as far out as, as beyond November necessarily. Yeah, November was a really long stretch. November next year was a really long stretch for those guys. You're talking about a whole nother year for the artists and the agents, uh, especially with all the changes that have gone on, was just something they weren't ready to do yet. So it would have been really hard to uh, to announce the change, to announce the move that we did with, with this lineup at that time. So, yeah, so postponing a full year, then we faced the dilemma of potentially losing a lot of that lineup or not a, at minimum not being able to announce them and saying we have postponed dates but we don't have any artists for the dates yet absolutely would have been unable to announce the artists um or, or all the artists and there's i think a substantial risk that somebody falls out somebody important falls out um so you know we felt like we were able to deliver the exact same i think we got everybody uh, which was, was exciting and I'm sure we'll have a few more along the way that we add as, as we always do but uh we kept the core uh, in place. And the new dates are November, just because I, I, I've seen some questions pop up. The new dates are November 13th to 20th, 2021. So November 13th to 20th, 2021. Uh, another very common question that I'm seeing is, we now have multiple cruises. Uh, Starbest Live has multiple cruises in November. How did you decide what went where? Uh, Sandy Beaches is now in November. Country Music Cruise is now in November. Malt Shop has always been in November. But how do you decide that run? Yeah, Malt Shop was always in November. So that week was a week that we had already. Uh, and then we made the decision on Sandy Beaches earlier than Country. On uh, Sandy Beaches, it's our first year really running it ourselves. We have a, a creative partner in Delgar McClinton and his wife, Wendy. They're very, very involved. We want to make sure after 25 years, we keep uh, we, we keep the great things that people have come to expect, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we you know we add some things ourselves, and we consulted with them early, and I think that Delper felt um, a move would really be something we should accelerate. Holland America was able to make that decision more quickly, and so we made that decision really before we made the country decision, um, and then we picked that week. Had we done them both at the same time, we could have flip-flopped them, uh, but but it was because of the timing of Sandy Beaches first. It was a good five, four or five weeks, I think, before we were able to announce country. We do it because there's a, I know there's always, you know, from doing the cruises myself, and as you know, both of you gentlemen know, uh, we do have some people that do both malt shop and country. And, you know, so obviously there are some questions from a handful of guests regarding why they can't be side by side. But if, if Sandy Beaches was announced legally speaking and, you know, contractually speaking first, then, you know, yeah, fair enough. And right. once those dates are announced, especially with, and, 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 you know, you know, either of you can talk to this. Um, Cause I think it's, I think it's sometimes misinterpreted by somebody that will just switch the dates, just switch them. But once you've contractually entered, not only with the cruise line, but, you know, Mike Robertson with artists as well. Correct. I mean, that becomes a whole nother. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got, you know, 15 to 20 artists contracted for that weekend time so so that becomes a whole other we were able to we were able to get all the sandy beaches artists as well almost all of them i think all of them um so so that was a positive thing as well but once we have all them moving them again is, it opens up a whole yeah, can right. of worms and uh, and and again it's the contract with the ship as well um but and another you know handful of questions relate to hey we love the country cruise uh and in fact i'm not reading specifics but I, i've kind of sorted them by <laughs> by what they're about and i'm looking at a bunch of them that say we love the country cruise if you're having the country cruise in november of 2021 when will the 2022 country music cruise be and i know you probably can't say specifically but is there any insight you'd like to give yeah i mean i think it won't be early in 2022 uh we won't so be likely able to, not january no it won't be january february march it, it, we can't really do it uh because we've done november <clears throat> and so we haven't made the final decision and really we'll defer to the guests too you know if we feel the guests really 
prefer January, then we'll roll it back into January, not 22, but perhaps the following January. Um, but again, it's 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 a little early to play that far out. I know people are asking about it, and it will not be early in 22. But uh, beyond that, still we're still looking at it. When you say that you'll you're you're open to communication with the guests, I mean I assume then that as country music, you know, as our cruisers respond in, whether with questions or comments or calls to CTS, that you know what you're saying is you're you're listening to to people, of course, as they. We read every single email that comes in. I'm copied on every email, and the call call center also aggregates all the input they get, and they give us a couple of times a week some feedback. So uh, we're definitely definitely listening and. You know, when we can't do something, it's either it can't be done, there's some some barrier to it, or um, you know, or not enough people are really looking to have that change. But we definitely, you know, and that that was assigned seating a few years ago, if people remember. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't have assigned seating when we started, and we heard a lot of people love the assigned seating. We felt that people were, you know, having to leave one venue to go to another to get online. We used to see the lines, and so we said, no, no more of that. Let's do assigned seating. And so that's the kind of thing that um, that we we listen and actually influences us greatly as we go forward. Now, I don't want you to speak out of class and and share any any secrets that some of the uh, the cruise lines are sharing with you. But you know, I don't think it's I don't think it's a closed secret to say that the cruise lines are communicating with you directly in terms of what they expect cruising to look like here as it starts to open back up. And I know that greatly influences your decision uh, as to when and where you're going to have some of these cruises. Would you mind discussing a little bit of kind of what the cruise lines are saying to you, if you if you can? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I've been in contact with them. Um with the cruise lines, both the ones that we work with and the ones that we don't work with, uh, and also industry groups and also some of my competitors that are out there that are uh, leasing ships as well. Uh, I would say every other day, uh, sometimes every single day. And a lot of it is up in the air. This is so unprecedented. I think we were all kind of caught off guard uh, and then some by it. But what I'm kind of hearing is that they're going to have a very, very small footprint this fall in terms of sailing. Um, if and when they do their whole sections uh, that they're not going to, I think they're not going to Canada. They eliminate Alaska. Alaska. They, you know, right. So a lot of the cruises have been canceled, the itineraries. Uh, the ones they do, I think, will be way less than full capacity, um, I think. You know, for the rest of this year, 20, 30 percent. Now, no one's telling me it's not etched in stone. Could it be 45? Could it be 15? I mean, it's it, but it's some relatively low number. And then I'm hearing that after the first of the year, they're going to move that up a bit. So it could be 50 to 70 percent early in 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 the January, let's say. Um, and then later in the year, they're expecting it to come back and and be able to use the ship in a full way. That the protocols will be in place, and that will give them in 17, 18 months to kind of work yeah. through this whole process. So that's back of the back of the envelope uh, yeah. kind of informal feedback that I'm getting from the ships. But it clearly it was not going to be the environment that we would want um, within the next six to nine months. And when you're talking percentages, just to be clear with guests, you're saying percentages of capacity. So you're saying that that low, you know, it, if, a, if a ship normally sails with 2,000 guests, you're saying, you know, and again, I'm not quoting your numbers, but what we're talking about is we're talking about the number of actual guests they let on a ship. Yeah, so something less, certainly less than the full, the full amount uh, and, for the foreseeable future. And that obviously greatly affects, you, you know, that, that affects everything. You know, it affects the the quality of the product you can give. It affects, I mean, it affects the bottom line. It is a business, obviously, in, in things of that nature. But I think something that, you know, a question that I hear a lot is, well, why don't we just go to a bigger ship? Uh, you know, we'll just take if 15% is too small or 50% is too small, go to a ship that holds 4,000 and 50% is our 2,000. And I mean, you know this intimately, so I don't mean to speak for you. You can touch on it, but that changes a whole bunch of things. One of the primary things is, you know, bigger ships don't have bigger theaters. Bigger ships don't have bigger dining rooms. Bigger ships don't have bigger venues. They just have more small venues. That that was always the odd thing. The bigger the ship, the smaller the main theater. It's yeah. it's uh, and so um, you know, will will the charter companies be using those ships? At a, and certainly, I think in the short term they may, but uh, in the long term, we feel like we'll be able to get the full 
group bond. We'll use the ship as we did in the past. And, you know, 18 months is a long way out and lots of, we expect lots of good things to happen. Uh, but we're keeping our eye on it. We're on contact with them, you know, like I say, every other day or every day. And another common question we hear from whether it's Starters to Live guests or I've, I've seen it online with normal cruising guests, you know, is uh, what are, and this one pertains directly, I guess, to you uh, and Starvis to Live and us, is what are the ships going to do or what are what are Starvis to Live, what are, in your head, what's going to be done to protect guests once we actually do start cruising? Does Starvis to Live have, you know, COVID things in place? Is it a ship thing? Is it, a, you know, how does it actually work out? That's a great question. It goes back to the structure of us and the ship. The ship is leased to us, but they we're really guests. And so all the safety protocols, all the sailing decisions, all the major decisions outside of entertainment um, and, and those kind of things are made by the ships themselves. And well, they should because, yeah. you know, Holland America has 15 ships that go out 52 weeks a year. Um, it's a huge number of, of and so they have processes and procedures that are in place across their brand. And whether we're on there or not on there, they have to go through those things, safety and health protocols. So they're going to set them. Um, and really, it won't be just uh, Holland America. It'll be done by industry group groups. And um, the charter companies will work with uh, CLIA, the, the industry group, and they will come up with the protocols, and then we will all adopt them. But our goal, uh, obviously, we're on board. Our mm -hmm. guests are on board and our artists are on board. So we really insist that, you know, we understand that these protocols are in place, that they're really going to be uh, completely effective. And um, and so, you know, that's that's the understanding I've had with the charter companies is that, you know, for self health and safety comes first. Um, but they will and they'll, they'll do that and we will abide by those rules and they will have stringent rules for, um, you know, coming on board and health protocols when you're there and, and all kinds of uh, things. They're working out now and, and we'll announce relatively soon, probably by next month or so, they'll yeah. probably have the first wave. And they already see some of it coming out, uh, handling of certain, certain things. It's interesting, too, because uh, a lot of different, you know, experts and different individuals have come out and said, you know, some negative things about cruise ships and how that, you know, we have to be so careful and blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I can't, I'm not here to agree or disagree, certainly with what these experts say, but I personally worked in the industry on board as an actual employee for over 15 years. And then I worked corporately for a little bit. And now I'm in the private sector working with Starvest Live. And, and uh, I can say that cruise ships are highly, I don't know that people understand how highly regulated cruise ships are and the, the strictness of the safety protocols. I mean, you know, it, it's, I've, I remember when the gastrointestinal illnesses began, you know, began they were they've been around forever but all of a sudden they were a cruise ship problem you know they weren't they originated in in nursing homes and in you know nurseries and you know preschools and things like that but they became a cruise ship problem and i remember watching i was working on board during that time period unbelievable response from cruise ships and the only reason i bring that up is i'm very very confident in the response of the cruise lines in the face of this and and how they're going to respond and the protocols put in place you know and I think it goes without saying that really it it's the biggest changes guests can, are going to see because there's a bunch of questions about what kind of changes are we going to see you know down to is the buffet still going to be open you know and it's it's hard to it's hard to go into depth as to what a cruise line is going to do but I think the primary form of of protection is going to be in the terminal you know it, it you're going to see the predominant uh, restriction restricted area in the terminal prevent it from getting into the terminal and or on board. And all kinds of cleaning procedures and, oh, and yeah. uh, you know, very strict. It's like a military operation to a large degree, and, and they do follow the rules. And I don't mean to minimize it, but I think it's, you know, football games and basketball games and on to live uh, touring. You know, we're in contact with the artists and everyone's grappling with Disneyland. They're all grappling with, with this. And, uh, and a ship, in a way, is a contained universe that not a lot of people are going to enter. And, you know, yeah. uh, once you're on board, you're on board. But... Uh, but again, it's, um, you know, we're confident, but we're keeping an eye on it and we're in contact yeah. with them all the time. And I think the key is, is to get back to having a great time. The artists themselves are, can't wait to get a mic and you can attest to this. They can't wait to get back out. Of course, they had concerns in January, but boy, as soon as we said November, 
they were excited. Um, they, they, they're looking forward to, and they can't wait to start playing again for people. Well, I was actually just going to say, Mike Robertson, yeah, thank you for your patience, you know, uh, as we walk through a lot of the, the protocols and, you know, helping people understand some of the decisions here. But let's talk a little bit about the artists. You're obviously very closely connected. Uh, tell us a little bit about the mindset. How are people, how are people feeling? What are people responding and thinking, not just to this cruise, but in terms of life opening back up? Yeah, well, I think in general, artists are excited to be able to get back out and play. You know, most of these artists, you know, some of these people haven't gone this long without playing in front of an audience <laughs> since they were 20 years old, you know, so so they love to play. And a lot of them, as you've seen, uh, you know, are doing lots of uh, online things and performances, but they, yeah, they want to get out and play music. And we've got some, you know, great artists lined up that we haven't had before. Josh Turner just announced they've got a great uh, covers kind of traditional country throwback record that he's made that's going to be coming out soon so he'll have all that new music to play which is right down our alley musically we've got you know ashley campbell uh glenn's daughter who's a, a, a wonderful banjo player singer entertainer on this year we've got mo pitney another really young uh traditional country artist we're going to bring the songwriters back again that we haven't uh announced yet we'll be booking them soon and we usually try to bring some writers in that have ties to the artists that are on board that have had cuts or relationships so we get the kind of collaborations that we had with randy owen sitting in with you know win varvel and wade last year and those guys and terry mcbride so uh yeah so a lot of exciting stuff to add and a lot of people that are that are happy to uh you know happy to know that they're going to get a chance to cruise and play to this crowd again even though it may be later in the year we're not going to miss a year and how do you go about uh and I'll direct this one to you, Mike Robertson. How do you go about deciding who to make offers to? What artists do, do we look at for the country music cruise? You know, some fit, some don't. And how do you, how do you go about navigating those waters? Well, I, I think having done it this many years now, I think we've got a real good sense. And of course, we get all the feedback and, and questionnaires and those things from our crowd, uh, who they want, who they like. Uh, so we kind of go through the list. We certainly understand this is more of a traditional country, uh, you know, kind of a, a throwback kind of cruise, if you will. So we look for whether it's a young act like a Mo Pitney or, or a Mickey Gilly, you know, a legend. Uh, we look for those kind of artists, Josh Turner being a, you know, a younger act than a Vince Gill, but he's a traditional country artist. So, mm -hmm. so we, we look for those kind of acts and then we reach out to the managers and the agents. A lot of these artists I know personally. Uh, and then, you know, we figure out who, you know, some acts just want, as we mentioned before, you know, we've got some acts we've made an offer to five years in a row that just let let the band and crew and everybody go in January and February. And, uh, you know, no amount of money is going to get them to say yes. They work, you know, 80 dates the rest of the year, 100 dates, and that's their downtime. And then there's some artists that still just aren't comfortable, never have been you know, being on a boat, they're just, they get, they may get seasick, whatever, they just aren't comfortable with the we environment, they're not sailors, you know, so you get a, you, you know, you get those artists as well, so pretty much, you know, anybody that's, you know, had hits from, you know, 1965 to, uh, <laughs> to, to 19, you know, 99, that's uh, not retired, that will yeah. sell, we've, we pretty much made an offer to at this point, we've either had them or, or, you know, I had them multiple times, or certainly they made an offer. We made an offer, and they haven't been willing to do it. So, and and I think that's something actually. Either one of you, you know, in Mike, you just you said it very well. But it, it's interesting. We assume that everyone has a price, right? I think we as a consumer assume that every. Well, why don't you just get Dolly? Why doesn't Dolly come do it? You know, and it, we assume that anybody will just come cruise if you offer the right price or. But some people just for other, you know, for various reasons, to your point a moment ago, Mike, they're either maybe they're off work early in the year. They, that's their vacation time every year. You know, they don't work or we have a lot of people that just don't want to sail. Right. They just they're they're they have an aversion to ships. They get seasick. They get things of that nature. And I know you guys have encountered that a lot when trying to book acts. Yeah, yeah. The, and, you know, and there's also, it, it, having been a manager for most of my career, there's, there's certainly a, a a comfort level. You're telling an artist, you know, you're, you're not on your bus. You're yeah. not with your gear, your own personal sound equipment and everything, everything we have to load in before. You know, there's a comfort zone that's very different of getting on a cruise ship and not being able to come back for seven days, working with other people's gear. Uh, versus rolling in on your tour bus to a backstage, yeah. being some, you know, sound checking for 45 minutes, going back to your hotel room, 
and then going back for an hour and a half show and then getting back on the bus and rolling to the next city. So, you know, there are some artists that are just more comfortable in that, you know, it, it, that is their comfort zone. It's their life that they lead. And there are others that, that love the cruise thing. It's a nice change up for them. So, yeah, so that's, that is definitely part of it. And, you know, there are artists that we probably offered five times, you know, six times what they would make on a, uh, what they're making yeah. on a typical night that just the answer is still no. And we've had some that we've gone, you know, give us a number and, and the agent comes back and goes, there is no number. So, uh, okay. so that, that's the case sometimes. And Mike, Mike, Jason, you've actually, and you can attest to this on not just country music, but on multiple cruises, uh, multiple charters that, that Star Vista runs, you've actually gone so far as to to adjust your ports of call, adjust your timings, departures, adjust how long you're going to stay in a port. So you can either do a land concert for a big artist that won't, that doesn't want to sail, or you can, you know, country music itself. Last couple of years, we've left Florida late and then Key West so that we can get artists on and off. Talk a little bit about either one of you, uh, how we can manipulate to, to accommodate some of those artists. Yeah, I mean, we will, we'll look at anything. Um, and we've had pretty, pretty good success doing the uh, Fort Lauderdale Key West and artists uh, want to take their bus and be able to go down from one to the other and play again. They would rather take the bus down than cruise in a beautiful room overnight and it doesn't make any sense. And, there, to and there's no explaining it to them either. <laughs> and then it gets complicated because Key West only has a limited number of um, slips to come into docks. So, you know, you got to get that position. You got to ask for a late night. You can't do a late night on the deck and the crazy thing about Key West is that there's a sunset rule where if you block the sunset that a hotel. particular hotel has I guess the Marriott yeah I have to pay the Marriott because their guests are losing the sunset uh it's it's uh so that's how far we go to uh buy out the sunset, sunset right yeah <laughs> to, uh, but we've done things where we've stayed you know it was late night in two ports back to back I think we did that yeah. with um with Kenny and Vince one year, we had two back to backs. So it might have been, might have been St. Martin and Puerto Rico, or whatever. And um, so we had two late nights, so we could get them both on board. Some artists won't do two shows in one night, so you need to kind of break it up. Some will do two in one night, and that's an easy on and off. So uh, we 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 try and look for every opportunity to um, to accommodate them. And again, as Mike has the research, then I have to go back to the ship and ask for permission to. Um, you know, to go to a port, stay later in a port, uh, leave later. Can I get to the next port in time? So um, it's uh, it's fun though. I mean, we love it because you're solving a problem, and yeah. you really want to get that artist. So we'll think of anything <laughs> under the sun. How can it possibly be done? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you know, and, and I, we literally do have those situations where some artists go, "Well, I I won't do two shows in one night. I won't fly to a foreign country, and I won't sail." So you know, then you're you know, trying to figure out, you know, and, and Millsap was a great example a few years ago, you know, just because of the health concerns, they weren't comfortable with him being out in the middle of the ocean for multiple days. So we were able to do a, a Lauderdale Key West thing. So we've really worked hard to try to accommodate to get some artists that we, especially if it's somebody we've never had before, uh, to try to try to give the, the fans a chance to see somebody they haven't seen on the ship. Well, and and Mike, that actually opens a, a segue that I would ask you. How do we decide? How do you decide on the ports of call? And and the, in terms of the ports of call, could you also talk a little bit about the potential for the November cruise? Do we know is it going to look like the January cruise or the postponed cruise? Yeah, we've always, you know, we've said to Holland America, what we want is the same itinerary because then we can deliver to the artists in the same way that they expected to get it at a different month. And so. You know, the challenge, of course, is that none of the ports are necessarily open at this point. So you're asking for permission to do something <laughs> where your person that was going to answer you may not be working yeah. at that yeah. point. The office may not be open. Um, but doing it early, working with the ship, having Holland America be really supportive of us. I mean, they, I can't say enough about how they always try and solve problems with us. And um, they, they've been a great partner. So that's what we have to do. We have to work through that individually. But the artists are expecting a certain, you know, a certain itinerary as well. And so lots of times it is artist driven. We try not to go to the same ports over and over and over again. Um, sometimes you run into same port versus the artist and, yeah. and you figure out what's the most important thing and, and you're you know, trying to meet in the middle someplace. 
Uh, Mike Robertson, a question came in. Uh, have you, well, have you, I'll, I'll read the question as it is stated. Have you ever had any of these artists on the cruise or considered booking Neil McCoy? We have not had Neil. Uh, we have, we actually made an offer to Neil uh, for this cruise and we didn't get him, but we, he has certainly been on our list. Kathy Matea. Kathy, we've had. Uh, Steve Werner. Steve, I've made about seven offers uh, out of, <laughs> you know, eight years too. And he and his wife do, uh, that's his downtime. They do, uh, they've got their own kind of RV sprinter van type deal. That That's when they kind of travel around the country and just haven't been able to uh, coax them out of, uh, out of uh, blocking their personal time for another gig that time of the year yet. So. Leanne Womack. Leanne, we made an offer to last year, and she had done another cruise a few years and had decided she wanted to take a year or two off from cruising. Uh, Tracy Bird. Uh, Tracy's not a cruiser. We have made offers to Tracy in the past and has not been one to uh, uh, to want to be on a ship. So. <laughs> Ann Murray. Ann Murray is retired. Has been for many years now. I think maybe 10 years or so. so. Doug Stone. Uh, Doug, we have not had, uh, so that, that's someone we'll keep in mind in the future, but we haven't had Doug. He would be more of a smaller remac. And uh, Bailey and the boys. Yeah, an another one we haven't had yet that is somebody we could potentially do at some point. And then, of course, there's all the folks. There's a ton of comments about people they want back, so don't forget folks like John Barry and on down the list that are some of their favorites, uh, just FYI. Absolutely. Gentlemen. <laughs> are there and the Jimmy Fortune, our, our fan favorite, is coming back this yeah. next year. So oh, part Jimmy. of the factor here is too is is that we know that certain artists are so wonderful on board, and and so we also look at the personality of the artists. Some artists are not going to be as much fun on board as, as others, and so you say, well, I'll get somebody new, but they might not be as much fun. You know, the interactivity, the the fact that the artist really enjoys it, taking pictures, sitting in the Lido, you know, deck with us. Uh, is also a, a big, big factor. And a lot of those people, I'm sure that people are mentioning bringing back are are those kind of folks that are just, they make the, they're kind of the heart and soul of, of what we do. And so uh, we love to have them back every other year, maybe, but yeah. certainly have them back. And, yeah, and I think personality-wise, there, there is a situation where we don't always want, you know, you don't want to twist someone's arm too hard to get them to come. If it's just a comfort level that are we going to be well taken care of, then that's the kind of deal where we'll try to convince them that we're going to make them comfortable and they're going to be, you know, they're going to have a great time on the ship. If it's somebody whose personality is just really not, you know, the country music cruise kind of personality, then they probably aren't the right act for us to have on the ship because they won't be as interactive and as involved as the, the artists that we yeah. have. We actually go to see a lot of them as well. And we see what kind of, uh, you know, performance they're putting on, what kind of material, you know, so there are a couple of artists that I've gone to see, and I said, "Wow, you know, half the uh, half the performance is perfect for us, and the other half wouldn't be." And I'm never quite sure which one I'll get on the ship, and so we hesitate yeah. a little bit, and um, you know, so so we're not sure we'll go see them. Um, uh, well, you can add to that list uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard. He charter he cruised back in the 80s and he should he'd sure be willing to cruise again according to this individual and uh tracy Moritz is on there. yeah i think ray may do i think he may do another cruise actually i think he may do a little more of an americana songwriter cruise that he does so but i love ray i know ray personally uh, i'm a big fan of his and that's interesting too if someone is on another cruise um yeah. lots of times the other people will preclude them from going on ours and advertising it so we're not terribly worried about people being on more than one. Uh, we have some artists that are on more than one, but their competitors sometimes block the artist from taking a seat. So, you know, that also is a challenge. Uh, and as you're, how far out, Mike, are you, uh, either of you actually, and I know we've talked about booking the artist, but how far out are we starting to make inquiries and offers and, and touch artists to see if they'd be interested? You know, some of these bigger names and names that we're offering for years and years. Yeah, for, or for a January cruise, you know, we're usually starting to have those conversations in June or July, you know, uh, uh, so we're, you know, we're 
16, 18 months out. Now, a lot of times we'll have those conversations and, you know, kind of our drop dead date is usually just before Thanksgiving in order to get the lineup complete and get the website ready and, and uh, to announce. And, you know, we have gone down to, you know, the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving at 11 <laughs> o'clock PM getting a Alabama call, you know, that, that they were in. So uh, with a lot of artists, Alabama being a great example, they just weren't sure year to year, especially with Jeff's health things, uh, you know, what they were going to do the next year, a lot of times until, uh, you know, November. And we're asking for not only the next year, but a month into the year after that, you know, so yeah. they're looking going, Hey, are we going to play next November? And we're going, yeah, but you know, once you figure out if you're going to play November, will you still go play another date in January? So, uh, so yeah, so it's usually that far out that we're, you know, starting to have agent manager conversations and we try to get as many early as we can. And then some, it's just a matter of, you know, call us back in two months, call us back in three months and uh, let us have a better, let us finish this year up. The, it, I can t I promise as a manager, sometimes the, the worst time to go to an artist is when they're still, they're out there in the middle of summer and they're playing fairs and festivals and it's a hundred degrees and the yeah. bus air conditioner is not working great. Yeah. And you're, you're trying to get somebody to say yes to something a year and five months away, you know, that's, that's out of their typical wheel. Well, that's not they what can they can really focus on tomorrow's do. concert. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're just trying to get through, you know, another, uh, another Texas fair, you know, when it's 98 <laughs> degrees and you know, humidity's like crazy. Uh, two questions about uh, the bad boy and the country music cruise. People want to know if you're in contact with and how's, how's Johnny Lee doing? I uh, spoke with Johnny's agent just a few weeks ago, and he seemed to be doing quite well. Uh, he seemed to be doing great and, uh, and just raring to get back out and play some music. He always emails me for infomercial sets. We do these infomercial sets on the other side of our business. We're you know, country music songs of the 60s and Carol Burnett and different uh, infomercials. And I guess he's stuck at home a bit. So I've gotten a couple of emails over the last few months. Uh, he seemed really, really well, but he was looking for entertainment. So uh, I guess he's not out and about as much. I think that's everybody right now. You know, I mean, I the artists I'm in contact with and I have relationships with, and, and you touched on it, Mike Robertson, a few minutes ago, that, you know, more than anything, people are having more time off now than they've had in you know years and years and years and all of a sudden they're you know the honey do list is gone and they've they've rebuilt the porch they've they've you know they've they've washed the back patio they've drywalled the basement and they got it now they're just done they're just they're done they're like all right let's yeah, go they're out of pressure treated lumber at home depot now anyway <laughs> yeah. so the, you know, the deck work's kind of come to a standstill so yeah wade actually yeah. played his he's played his first date a couple of weekends ago when i sent him the the date came in pretty late it was down in panama city beach florida and you know, his text back to me was, well, I guess I better go practice playing guitar. So, uh, you know, these, these guys are just constantly playing. Yeah, that's pretty great. Uh, obviously, you know, Country Music Cruise is is a wonderful product. It's it's a beautiful, it's a beautifully orchestrated event, and it's a huge event. There's a lot of moving pieces and parts to it, um, you know, and we're kind of closing down on time here. So, Mike J, I'd, I'd aim it at you first. As you look I assume decisions decisions to postpone are never easy. And, and, and nothing like this is easy. You have to take a lot of things into consideration. And this has got to be heart wrenching for you guys both to to make a move like this when you know so many people look forward to this and love this the way they do. Yeah, we you know I've I've spent Mike has been there from the very beginning. I've spent the last seven or eight years, probably plus, um, you know, working on it, it's incredibly disappointing. I mean, we came off of last year, we had so much fun. It was just great. We were so excited about the, the next year. This came out of left field. We we're unbelievably disappointed. Um, it was very, very painful. But, you know, when we looked at it, we said, you know, you, got, you gotta do the right thing and, and um, just gotta make that decision as painful as it is, you know, to, to postpone it. And then we'll be together again. And but I'd never take anybody's support for, for granted. We really, really appreciate the guests, and, and we would never want to have a situation in which we didn't think we could deliver what we need to deliver, what we promised to deliver, what they've experienced before. So um, yeah, that just painful, difficult. Um, you know, it's it's uh, you know we're so focused on putting a great event together when all of a sudden you got to dismantle an event. Yeah. It's a terribly painful. You know, decision to do but 
you know, the rest of society is going through this and, and on so many levels. So, you know, we, we had to kind of step up and do what needed to be done. And, uh, and again, I think we'll have a great time and I think we'll have more time to plan, which is, is always great because we fill the rooms up more and we go earlier and later and in the afternoon and, you know, as, as much as we can, we'll add, add uh, entertainment. You know, Mike, it's, it, Mike Robertson, it's, it's, it's to, to Mike's, Mike Jason's point, you know, it, it's, it, it's got to be hard for you as well as you deal directly with many of these artists that there's a community, you know, you just spoke of, of Wade Hayes and there's actually a couple of questions in there about Wade and Chuck and some of the people that do all of these, you know, there's a community, there's a community of artists as well as guests and it's disappointing on both sides, you know, when you have to do something like this and it's, it's probably not easy to tell the artists that have been looking forward to this either. No, not at all. You know, and I think we have, I, I think, you know, every year I'm inspired by the music on the cruise. I'm, you know, there are always these great moments and great collaborations yeah. and great performances. I mentioned Randy sitting in at the songwriters thing. I mean, you just don't see that, you know, every yeah. day. And, and so there's always these great moments every year, some of the collaborative shows that we do. So, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, it's tough to push all that back for a year. I was telling Mike Jason, it's going to be really strange to think about not being on a ship for that long because it's been a every year thing for this whole family of fans we've gotten to know and the artist and the that whole community of crew. And, and uh, so, yeah, it, it, you know, but, you know, the good news is that we do have everybody we wanted that are going to be coming back. We've got time to add some more things and come up with some more programming. So it will be, uh, it'll be a great experience. And I would just say to everyone, you know, especially the, the regulars are the fans, you've gotten to know these artists now. So when it is safe to go back out and these artists are touring, you know, please go support live music, you know, go see them when you're, you know, you, you won't be seeing them in January. So go see them when you're in your town. And then, uh, then we'll all hang out together again on the cruise in November. And, and, you know, kind of a more specific question. Some artists are, and I just mentioned, you know, Wade specifically, you know, Wade's on every cruise. Why do you have, and, why do you specifically choose artists that are your core? How do they become your core? How do they become part of every single cruise versus every other year or every few years? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's in a lot of cases, it's fan reaction. In Wade's particular case, he wrangles the house band. So we, you know, we, not only do we do his performances, but he's such a great musician and surrounds himself with such great musicians. So, you know, I think in Wade's case, that's a kind of a unique deal. And you have people like, uh, you know, the Oaks that have, you know, this giant base that wants to come every year and the, their fans come every year and they were kind of there with us when we started. Uh, so they've missed, I think, a year or a couple of years we, we skipped. So it's always a balance between uh, bringing back the fan favorites. I mean, you know, every year we do this thing and it's like, oh, I wish I could just bring everybody back next year. But, yeah. you know, then, then at a certain point there would be some burn factor. So we do try to mix it up just to you know, enough. And even though there are some people we would love to have, you know, every year, those are the artists that kind of turn into the every other year artist. Uh, so at least we, uh, you know, we get them as often as uh, we can, but also leaves room for that next fan favorite to show up that turns into another every other year artist. And then, you know, we have had some artists that, you know, have retired as we've done this thing, you know, Kenny yeah. being an example that did it a couple of times. So that's the other thing too, is doing this, uh, you know, bringing in new artists, new faces, and uh, having people that we see once we get them on, they click. And then we, you know, I'd never met Jimmy Fortune before we had him, you know, the first year. Great and I'm guy. like the biggest Jimmy Fortune yeah. fan on the ship. You know? Great guy. And there's actually a couple of comments about, you know, don't forget about the artists that you guys had back in the beginning of the country music cruise. <laughs> and I get it. Some of them are retired and moved on. But there are some comments that uh, don't forget about the early, <laughs> the early cruise uh, <laughs> guests or uh, talent. Um, and I know we have um, it, over there as, as we're kind of wrapping up here for the guests. If you look over on your chat section and your question section, there is a link there to frequently asked questions. And if you go online to the Country Music Cruise under booked guests, there's a link to frequently asked questions as well. So if by chance we didn't uh, overall get to your question, please understand that uh, hopefully you can find it there. If they are specific questions pertaining directly to you, like I said in the beginning, whether it's a, a cabin question or a financial question, et cetera, uh, one of the, somebody will get a hold of you directly or will do their best if they have not already, uh, get, uh, reach out and get a hold of you. Um, I wanna say thank you very much uh, to both of you gentlemen, obviously for taking the time 
to to jump on here and to uh, to to chat with our guests and let them know a little bit more about how it is that these things are built and and uh, how Mike Robertson, how you wrangle and and, uh, and go about dealing with artists on the regular, and Mike J, you as well, and of course also more specifically, you know, some of the thought process and decision making that goes into the postponement of something that's as beloved as the as the country music cruise, and and I think it, it's also important to note just in case people don't understand this is true that malt shop of this year has been postponed and all of your january cruises correct so this is not just a country music cruise thing that's true yeah the holland america ships which were uh, november and january or three in january were all postponed and um okay. and so uh it was not just country okay. so yeah i mean obviously this is and it's affecting you know, Star Vista Live is not the only charter company out there. There's lots of other companies that do these, and everyone's facing the same thing. You know, this is not unique just to, to Star Vista. It's 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 widespread. Uh, for any guests that do have uh, some questions and want to change or upgrade your current reservation, uh, that number is eight six six four seven six two eight seven nine. Again, eight six six four seven six two eight seven nine. You can also find some frequently asked questions over there on the side and uh, before or on the chat over there on the side. And uh, before we let you go, uh, Mike Robertson, is there anything you'd like to say to all the country music fans that are tuning in to watch today? Any, any last message you'd like to say? No, really just go out and see live music. You know, when, when live music's back, please go support it. These musicians, not just the stars, but all those guys in the band and the guy mixing the front of house sound and the guitar tech and all these people uh, have been out of work for a long time. So, uh, so be, be it your local musicians in your local markets, the guy that's, you know, playing the pub down the street or, uh, or your national touring artists that come through, please support live music and looking forward to seeing everybody back on a cruise soon. And uh, Mike Jason, how about you, sir? Yeah, Wilson, I thank everyone for their support. I really look forward to uh, being with you again. Um, and I should really mention, I'm not going to go through all the list of uh, folks that help us behind the scenes, but our call center, um, Janine and event planning and, and Jen and her marketing team, the messaging team, the web team, uh, the, our contract people, all this stuff gets done. And then all the little bits and pieces of it that have to come together. Lots of great people work really hard and, you know, you kind of never see and meet them, but, uh, but I want to thank them as well because you don't get through something like this uh, without a full team in place. So, recognition and, and uh, thanks to them as well very very true well again thank you very much of course <laughs> without <laughs> <one day. laughs> thanks Mike um, I, I know I speak on behalf of the country music guests and, and we're seeing some feedback here in the comments that uh, that people really appreciate you taking the time uh, to help answer some questions and and help people better understand kind of what we're going through and and I think obviously the the overall message that anyone and everyone would share is you know we want everyone to stay safe we want everyone to stay healthy. We want everyone to take care of themselves and their family and, you know, and, and do your best to, uh, to play by the rules, you know, and let's, let's all care about each other and, and do our best to, to help each other out a little bit here as we move forward. Uh, I think it's brought a lot of good perspective, you know, to, to folks in terms of taking care of your fellow man for lack of, and, and woman for lack of better, uh, better terms. So, uh, to all our folks that have tuned in to watch all our country music fans, we love you, we adore you, we thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. On behalf of me, I am your virtual cruise host, Jason Venner, Mike Jason, and Mike Robertson, part of the Country Music Cruise. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of the year. We look forward to seeing you so soon on our Country Music Cruise 2021. Be well, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.